Um, it's, it's really great to be here. Um, I only have a little time to speak, so I'm just going to get on with it. Um, and basically what I'm going to do is, is tell you a story over the next 10 minutes or so, and uh, hopefully you'll be inspired. In fact, I'm sure you'll be inspired. Um, and um, we started the Homeless World Cup in 2003, and we're trying to change the world. And uh, the world, for a lot of people, is not a good place. United Nations say there's a billion people homeless uh, in the world, and uh, these are the sort of typical pictures you see uh, uh, in London or in San Francisco. Three million people, they say, in the streets of uh, USA these days. Uh, this uh, is from Japan. Pick any country in the world now, and there are these sites. And really, it's not sustainable for the world. It's something that's really, I believe, completely unacceptable. So uh, poverty is growing. Uh, the gap between the rich and the poor continues to grow. We're in the middle of a global economic recession, so the situation gets worse. So what to do? Um, and so I, I'm a great believer in uh, taking practical action. Everybody can take a, a little step forward, and you can create a, a, a change. So. Um, uh, in 2001, a colleague of mine who worked in the street paper, I worked in the street paper in the past, uh, were at a conference on homelessness in South Africa, and we were in a bar having a beer after this conference. And we said it had been a really good conference, but there was, was no homeless people there. How could we get them involved? And uh, uh, by the end of this evening, drinking uh, um, a few glasses of beer, I suppose, we came up with this invention called the Homeless World Cup, where homeless people could participate uh, in an event which was inclusive because it was football and represent their country. So it was a great conversation, and you've probably all been there uh, uh, at some point in your life where you've had this great conversation. Critical issues the next morning, great conversation, will we leave it, leave it in the bar or will we do it? So we just decided that we would do it. And so two years uh, later, um, in 2003, we had the first Homeless World Cup in uh, Graz in Austria. And um, this is what it is. We, we play uh, in the uh, small court in the center of a, a, a city. Um, and there's eight players in each team, four on, four off. Um, they play uh, seven minutes each way, play about three games uh, uh, a day. Um, to do it properly, you have to be really, really fit. Um, and it's a week-long competition. The uh, standard of play is very different. Some of the players are very, very good, and some of the players are really, really terrible. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's about participation, and we create a, a, a competition whereby the, the really good guys play against each other and the not-so-good play against each other. So everybody's winning in the end, although it's very competitive, and people want to win the main uh, trophy. And then we build these stands in the, uh, uh, like this in the center of towns, and people can come and, look and, and, and watch. Um, and so we were only going to do this once. And in the first uh, year, we had uh, 18 countries uh, that came. And what happens in the lead-up is that uh, in, in the year leading up to the event is our partners in, uh, in these 18 countries work with homeless people in the street. And football is, is, is beautifully simple. So here's a ball. Would you want to play now? And so we could have a game now here, if you like. It would be something else, but uh, one half of the hall against the other half of the hall, and you could have a game with a ball. You, you, you can play inside your house, you two aside. You can play old, young, male, female. It doesn't matter what standard they are. You can, you can, you can create something. So we do that, and in, in, in the process of playing, people start to find a bit of self-respect and self-esteem because they're, because they're in a team. Um, and a lot of the homeless people, it's about self-esteem and self-respect that's lost. So in that process, people start to, to change. And then once a year, the best players are selected to, to represent their country. They're not necessarily the, 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 the best players, but they're the ones who've stayed on the program the best. And a lot of them have, have, have changed as a result of, of, of trying to get on their team. So... Um, at, this, at this event, we, we didn't really know what was going to happen. It's like, any, like anything you start new. You're not quite sure. We thought it would work because we knew about the power of football, but we weren't so sure. Um, but we had some fantastic change taking place at this event in Graz. First one, the homeless players themselves changed out of all recognition. So you could actually see them growing. They're standing singing the national anthem at the top of their voices, better than the professional players. Fantastic ambassadors for their, for their country, trying to do their best in the, representing their country in the, in the home strips that they had. 
huge change within them. Secondly, the people watching, the stands were full. In fact, in Graz, we had to, to bring some screens in because we were terrified these stands were going to fall down. And all these people are applauding the homeless people. But only the day before, they would cross the road to get away from them because they're dangerous, smelly, horrible people. But here they are now. All we've done is built some stands and got people playing in the football strips. And there's change. Everyone's cheering. And even now, the players have become heroes, and their children are coming up and got autograph books, and the, the guys are signing autographs, and they become football heroes, and people are liking them. So there's a change going play, in place. And thirdly, the world's media turned up. From all over the world, countries that weren't even participating turned up with television cameras and gave 100% positive coverage of the event. And normally, media coverage is negative. It's negative towards homeless people, but it was all positive, 100%, not 95, 100. So afterwards, we did some research into this, and, and um, we discovered that nearly 80% of the players had changed their lives forever. We, we couldn't believe it. So they'd got jobs, they'd, they'd gone to college, they'd, they'd uh, uh, got houses, they'd, a lot of them had come off drugs, a lot of them were going into the sports industry. So we, we we didn't believe the figures, and we checked, and we checked, and we checked, and it was true. And so, we just kept doing it. And so, the following year, we were in Gothenburg. Now we had 26 uh, countries taking place. Then in 2005, we were in Edinburgh, um, where we had 32 teams taking part. Then in Cape Town in 2006, uh, we now have 48 teams taking, taking part. And this is the main square in Cape Town, for those of you who know it, outside the famous balcony where Mandela made his speech. And just prior to this picture being taken, the homeless teams had marched through the street, 100,000 people there, and the president of South Africa, one of the most powerful people in the world, had stood on the balcony and saluted them all. And this is uh, uh, Desmond Tutu came down, Eusebio, those of you who know football is there as well. And so we continue to grow, and we have national partners now all over the world, 73 countries, more and more people getting involved uh, in, in, uh, in, in the event. Um, and underneath uh, each, each one, in each country, there is now their own competition. So this is one in Holland, and Dutch uh, uh, cities play against each other, neighborhoods first, then cities, and then they have the national championships in the main dam square in Amsterdam, and the, the winning team comes to represent Holland in, at the Homeless World Cup. This is another one in Mexico, which is really growing. This year, uh, in the beginning of October, the Homeless World Cup will be in uh, Mexico, and they've just finished their trials. 20,000 homeless people involved in their trials across 32 states in Mexico. And making huge difference here, great, creating partnerships and so on. Um, and then on the other extreme, this is uh, uh, our partners in uh, Kenya. And they, this is where they play. And this is a very important place to them. They call it the San Siro. It's their San Siro. It's their place of dreams. So we don't laugh at this because it is San Siro for them. And there's thousands of them being in, in, involved in this. Uh, uh, adventure in, Cape, in Kenya. And there's, there's our project in uh, Uganda, which is uh, women who've all been from a refugee camp, who've now all become uh, coaches and are uh, supporting their children and so on in development in, in Uganda. Uh, we do our own coaching, so it's coaching and uh, leaders emerge out of our partners uh, uh, around the world and particularly uh, successful with women. So we essentially here from the UK do coaching programs, they become coaches and change their lives as a result of that. Um, this is an interesting uh, statistic which I do and the challenge is for you to do the maths. Um, uh, some research in New York said it cost uh, $40,000 for a person to be homeless. So the state would have to pay if you were homeless in the street, begging, and the police time, and the hospital time, and the health, and so on and so forth. Just that chaotic lifestyle would cost $40,000. So if we're involving 700 players on our, on our uh, uh, annual event, we are saving 40,000 times 700, which one of you is going to tell me how much is that? Yeah, yes? Yeah, so a lot of money. And uh, we actually have 50,000, probably more now, but let's say 50,000 on the scheme all the year round, times 40,000 is how many, how much? Some billion, anyway. Um, uh, huge amounts of money saved uh, as a result of an intervention just with a, with, with, with a football. Um, 
and we have this demonstrated impact all the time. These figures are consistent now in, 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 in the change that's going on. Um, we um, were in Copenhagen in 2007. I like showing this uh, slide because remarkably, Scotland won. And <laughs> to say, I can say I've seen Scotland win the World Cup. It's, it's not a lie, not a dream. And these are our, a lot of uh, pictures of our people here who've emerged out, who are now our ambassadors. Second one at the top there, Michelle is from Brazil, came from the streets of Brazil. Now she plays actually for Brazil uh, at, at, at football. A number of these others are, are, have become professional coaches with, with big clubs. But what's most important about them is they're real leaders. And it's much better when you have the peer group leader, much better than me talking, because they say they've been there, they've changed their lives, and they've become leaders. So as a result of all of that, we have a hu huge impact um, uh, within in neighborhoods and countries around the world. Um, this is us now in Melbourne in 2008, and this is Federation Square. The final is between Afghanistan and, um, and uh, Russia, um, because sport makes you can't make these things up, you know. And it was a fantastically close match, and Russia had a chance to equalize in the last second and missed. Afghanistan won, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house, as you might imagine. It was amazing, and the crowds were amazing. You couldn't, you couldn't actually move. Um, uh, and then in 2009, we were in Milan, and uh, Ukraine won there. Uh, in Rio, um, in 2010, we played on a Cocobana Beach. Brazil won the, 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 the World Cup there, of course. And uh, Brazil also won the Women's World Cup. So we developed the Women's World Cup to begin with. We'd started off, it was integrated, and now we have separate, uh, separate teams. And, and the women's development has, has been sensational over the past few years. Uh, then last year we were in Paris, played under the Eiffel Tower. Unbelievably, this is true, actually, Scotland won again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Kenya won the Women's uh, World Cup. Um, and uh, this year we are in Mexico City, in the, in the main uh, square. Um, all around the world we create new partners. There's lots of volunteers who get involved, companies now. We have sponsors like Nike and so on and so forth who support us. This whole thing is growing, and it's all come from just a football, from an idea in a bar and a football. And I think the message in, in, in this story uh, that I would want to kind of leave you with at this moment is that this, this world is not a good place to live in. We've created a world that's not a good place for millions of people. And uh, it is quite possible to change it, though. It's very simple to change, to create change, but we all have to do something. So we as human beings are ingenious. The people who have organized this event tonight, this is an ingenious uh, thought, great creative thought for the action. Uh, putting on the Olympics, genius. Going to the moon, creating, inventing the internet. And look at the impact the internet's had. We, human beings, did that, and yet we are incapable of doing something about the number of homeless people lying around the streets and people living poverty in the world. So we can change it if we want to. And by using our brains. So we did a very, very simple thing, which was to create a Football World Cup, and we've created change, and we'll just keep doing more and more. And my kind of message to you, my call to action is you, well, if you all did a little something, just a little something, you'd create a massive impact. And you, from this hall here tonight, you, we can change the world if you want. Easy. We can change the world, and we can end homelessness. I don't believe this world should have any homelessness and poverty in it, and we can change it if you want. And so e even with us now, you can just do simple things. What could you do? Ah, oh, just, just uh, like us on Facebook. Tw tweet about us. That would take you a few seconds. That's all you need to do. It doesn't have to be with us. It could be with other organizations. That's how you create the change, by doing small things. When I say there's a billion people homeless in the world, your brain goes numb. What can I do? We all get numb by that freeze. But actually, if we want to, we can create change. So our people are inspiring. I hope this little talk's inspired you. Hopefully, maybe I have two, three minutes to answer a question, and I will stop there at this moment. Thank you very much for listening.